Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webcast, Power BI Updates and Highlights from 2017 Data Insights Summit. In today's presentation, we will be revealing exciting, cool features announced at, this, at the Data Insights Summit, including a new timeline, custom visual, quick insights, bookmarks, drill down, what if analysis, and Visio integration. You'll find out more about Power BI Premium, which offers dedicated premium capacity in the cloud. Next, I'd like to introduce today's presenter, Michael Hammonds, Director of Customer Experience for AKA Enterprise Solutions. Before we get started, I ask that you please submit any questions you may have for today's presenter by typing them into the questions pane of the control panel. You may su submit your questions at any time and we will address as many as possible during the Q&A session at the end of today's presentation. With that said, I'll pass the mic to Mike. Um, take it away. All right, thank you, Jessica. And thank you everyone for joining our webinar today. As uh, some of you may know, last month in early June, the uh, second annual Microsoft Data Insights Summit uh, was held in lovely Seattle, Washington. And it was actually a sunny Seattle uh, this time. Uh, so uh, lots of fantastic weather, as a matter of fact, and lots of great fish. Uh, the salmon were in season. Anyway, uh, you know, it, it's amazing in that uh, the Power BI application just continues to amaze and uh, grow extremely quickly. Uh, amazing on some of the things that were shared with us us, which I'm going to share uh, with you all today. Uh, and uh, it, it's just literally every month it's like Christmas because we get so many new, interesting, and useful capabilities that truly help us solve business problems using the data that we have uh, in our organizations. So uh, some of those growth numbers, 11.5 million data models are now being hosted up in the Power BI service, 11.5 million, and that's in really less than two years. I mean, technically, I think... Uh, July 24th was the two-year anniversary of the Power BI service. Um, so I think that's just phenomenal. And um, according to Microsoft, there's uh, around 30,000 data models being added daily. And so I think we're going to continue to see that uh, number increase probably exponentially as more and more people understand the true power behind Power BI. Uh, and some of what we're going to cover today is really going to um, reinforce uh, that. So, uh, some of the big announcements that were made uh, right up front at the uh, opening kickoff was Power BI Premium is now generally available. And so, the, the couple things that it really brings to the table, three, I would say, are, are really big. One is it's a way, if you're a larger organization and you want to provide access to Power BI dashboards and reports to everybody in your organization, um, it's a lower cost way to provide that. Uh, otherwise, it's uh, $10 per user per month, which is very affordable as well. Uh, but as you get, you know, up into the couple hundred or several hundred users, um, you're probably going to be better off going with the Power BI Premium. The other thing it provides is dedicated resources. So when you use the PowerBI.com service and you're posting your uh, data models and sometimes data, depending on how you're creating your, um, your dashboards, it uh, is kind of a shared model, right? So what the Power BI Premium does is essentially gives you your own set of servers and your own set of memory um, so that your performance is going to be considerably higher and your scalability will be higher. And there's different tiers, but um, it, it's, a, it's a really great capability there. And then the third component of that is it's the first step into being able to host your own powerbi.com service essentially on your own servers okay? so that's been asked for 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 a long time people have wanted to be able to deploy on premise not, not a lot but you know there's still a good you know solid size of people out there that want to do that on their own servers uh, and so in this case that will allow you still some caveats which i'll show you in the demonstration but um, that is now available okay so uh, as I mentioned, available with Power BI. Uh-oh, and it uh, looks like my PowerPoint has just uh, crashed and is going to restart. So anyway, as I mentioned, 
Um, it is available with the uh, Power BI Premium, the Power BI Report Server, very similar to the SQL Server reporting services. It has a very similar look and feel, if you're familiar with that look and feel in SQL Server 2016. And oh, by the way, that is one of the requirements in that uh, Power BI Premium for, or rather Power BI Report Server for on-prem does require SQL Server uh, 2016. Uh, so let's uh, get our uh, presentation back up and running. Hopefully that doesn't crash again. That was weird. So uh, let's see. Uh, and I'll and I'll show you quickly here. But here's one of the big limitations currently. This is being addressed, and as they um, keep rolling out those features, uh, you'll see that uh, you'll be able to have more flexibility. But today, if you want to go on-prem, it only supports a live connection to SQL Server analysis services or to Azure analysis services. Okay. So in other words, you can't build a, um, a, a dashboard in the Power BI desktop. Uh, and then push it into the Power BI report server yet. Okay. And I'll show you what, what will happen if you do try that. Okay, here's another thing. And this is a uh, pre-beta, so it's not really quite yet available. Uh, it will be at some point here, we're told within the next three months, and that was as of early June. So uh, we should see it between what, uh, July, August, so by September, hopefully we'll see this new custom visual. Very powerful in that um, it really helps you understand kind of, you know, more things along a timeline. Really one of the great uses that uh, we're kind of thinking about this is a lot of people want to see, let's say, for example, I've, I've got a large company that is one of my customers. And we have a lot of people that interact with that company, right? We have different meetings, we have different phone calls. Um, we're working with different departments, things along those lines. And you want to see on a time scale where those activities happen and what exactly happened on different days, um, you'll be able to do this in more of this really nice visual. And I'll, I'll show you the actual live example that you can go out to too, which is timelinestoryteller.com. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a brief jump out to the timeline story. And you'll see that it is actually running inside of an actual Power BI. You do wanna scroll down a little bit when you get to uh, this particular page and uh, it'll be displayed here in this view. So let's uh, go ahead and try to make that a little larger and then uh, give you an, uh, an, an idea of uh, what you can do with this uh, fascinating and interesting new custom visual. Uh, so let's see, let's, uh, come on. And maybe we won't if uh, this is going to continue to be the case. There we go. All right, so you're starting to see the visuals there. I'm gonna try and expand this. Um, so there's two ways to navigate this. And uh, one is just kind of almost like a little player, if you will. So scene one, you know, this is at the beginning of uh, Dustin Johnson's history at uh, the, the um, PGA. And so, uh, and his first win. And so if I go to the next, what happened next? And we see, oh, he got second place, fourth place and eighth place in different years. Uh, let's see his record. How's he compared to open, uh, other open champions? And you can kind of, oh, now let's see how he compares to Jim Furyk. And now we see the timelines of both individuals and see where they placed and things along those lines. So I can kind of keep clicking through the visual and notice that, you know, as I progress through time, it's kind of, giving me those different visuals, or I can actually just kind of hover or click on any of these little spots here, and it'll tell me exactly what happened um, on that particular date and time. So again, think of that in terms of a, you know, of, of a key account or a key customer somewhere along those lines. Uh, I think that uh, really gonna help with, uh, to help telling the story of the data that you have available to you. All right, so back to the presentation. Uh, so exciting one, and um, and actually this was built uh, for the UK National Trust. They're the ones that actually demonstrated it. You can see a video of that. I've got some resources here later in the deck. Okay, another one. This one I cannot demonstrate live yet because it's not uh, been released. So most of what we're looking at today are what was announced that, according to Microsoft, will be available by September. Okay, and so you've got now some newer Quick Insights. They've got Quick Insights that is essentially a separate page. Um, we won't go into the details of that, but this is really an enhancement of that. So 
as you can see here, if I've got a, a let's say a line chart and I see a little uh, a little bump there, and I want to understand and have the system maybe help me figure out what happened, why is that flyer there, if you will, then you can hit right click on the line and then you'll get a little pop up like this and you'll be able to analyze and you can hit explain the difference or find additional insights. And if I hit find additional insights, it'll pop up this little window and then you'll see that it's kind of taking a look at that particular data point and showing you other information specific to that data point. Okay, the beauty of that is I as a analyst or any, there's no developers that are required to do this insight. It's actually the Power BI engine and the intelligence behind it that's actually doing that. There's also some Cortana and a little bit of a machine learning in there, but that's all behind the scenes. You don't have to worry about any of that. Okay, and then you can kind of scroll down and you see additional details about what will help answer the question to what is causing that, what I may view as a discrepancy or as a flyer, right? Another one, Visio integration. Uh, this one is pretty exciting as well in that I can now take a Visio diagram and link it up with data and have the two interact. So I can click on an item, in this case, it's a fishbone um, diagram in my uh, Visio, and I've got data associated with it in these other visualizations. So these two visualizations on the right-hand side here are just standard Power BI visualizations. Well, this is now a standard Power BI visualization as well. So let's go in and, and take a quick look at that one. So I'm gonna go back to my Power BI, and I'm going to go to uh, my visualization. So lead management flow. Here we go. Uh, so let's uh, don't save that one. And now we'll see that it's going to load up, and I will get a new visual here. Oops. And where is it? Great data set. Uh, there. There it is. It's in my dashboard. All right, so as you'll see here, I've got uh, standard visuals, okay? So I've got a, just a grid here and a, and a column chart. And now here is the actual Visio um, itself. So this is this Visio diagram is actually, right now I'm, I'm hosting it or it's being um, held inside Visio online. So you'll see that it, it's basically a marketing flow. So when a customer signs up for a trial, here's what happens. Or if they just, you know, do an organic um, sign up, you know, just kind of wandered across our website, it goes to the marketing, then it goes to a marketing qualification, and then it goes to sales queue, et cetera, right? So it kind of just tracks that flow. So what's nice about this here is I've been able to link the data in my data set with the visual, okay? Uh, so, for example, if, uh, oh, and of course it's going to decide not to work for me now. Uh, let's try page one visual. See if that's in there any better. And uh, if not, then, uh, yeah, darn, that's just not showing me what I was expected to show. Uh, so, well, wait a minute, there it goes, I think. Let's uh, try to expand this a little bit larger. And uh, as I click on each one of these, you'll see that the data, so there's the opportunity. If I click on field sales, there's field sales. Um, I was actually able to also post some of the data that you see here on top of, or it's overlaid on the visual um, and vice versa. So something must have happened there in my, or maybe I didn't save it quite there. Uh, but anyway, gives you a great idea of now how you can marry um, the very powerful visuals that are, the strength of Visio, along with the data that you may have. Okay. So fascinating type of integration there, and I think it's going to open up a lot of capabilities uh, for people that are um, needing that type of uh, visualization. Okay, let's go on to the next, ArcGIS Maps. And this one too, you, actually I, you saw it there in the beginning. Um, now it is called GA or generally available. Previously it was in preview. And so now, this is great, especially for those public sector companies out there that rely pretty heavily on um, ArcGIS. And this is data that's coming, it's a product from a company called Esri, E-S-R-I. And it's really just a very detailed mapping solution 
married with all types of different demographic data. Okay? And so as you can see here, based upon the data that I have, we can go all the way down to the zip code and then you have the ability to overlay, for example, a median income for counties or median income for cities. Uh, and so the different colors that you see there are representative of you know, that type of information. So let's just say maybe you want to get an idea of the population of each of those uh, counties overlaid with your data, that'll give you a really good idea. So maybe you can now start to target other areas of that city or that town or that state based upon the data that you're seeing, um, perhaps to increase your lead generation, increase your sales, find customers that are similar to the ones that you're having success with in some of those other counties uh, or cities, whatever the case may be. So really, I think uh, much, more powerful mapping capabilities now with this ability to overlay uh, the uh, layers that you find in, in Arcus. And uh, you can actually also uh, create some of your own additional uh, visualizations. Another big one, and this one is, I think, potentially groundbreaking, groundbreaking. Ooh, say that 10 times real fast. Uh, and, and what I mean by that and why I say that is it allows you to now actually change data, okay? And I'll show you a quick example. It's very simplistic, but um, I think uh, very powerful at the same time. So you can, for example, now capture data inside your, PR, your Power BI dashboard, save that to a data set, and even see it change live on the screen. So. Uh, I think just a phenomenal way to now be able to say, look at some data, make some changes, have it update that data in a data set, um, all from within your Power BI uh, dashboard. And what else, how it's doing that is it's doing that through Power Apps. So we have the ability to connect Power Apps to Power BI. Okay. So we'll come back to a demonstration of that. Uh, drill through. Now, this is not to be confused with what I would call drill down. <laughs> and drill down essentially to me is, let's say, for example, you've got a chart that's got um, year data, right? So you're looking at your last three years data, 2015, 2016, 2017. When you drill down, let's say you click on 2016, it then drills down to the next layer and shows you Q1 through Q4. And if you click on one of the quarters, it drills down to the month and you can go all the way down to the day. So that's a drill down. Drill through is a little bit different in that it'll, now it will allow us to, for example, have the ability to go to a detail page. So notice here is, you know, this is an actor data, and this is what they demonstrated. And you'll see that there's this, there'll be a new setting here, drill through settings. And what that will allow you to do is then link that to the data in, say, a grid, and then drill to the details of that particular um, record. So uh, it, I think it's a way to kind of have uh, more of a, you know, a single page report or, you know, an overview of an individual, an overview of a company, things along those lines that weren't possible before, or they were, but, you know, you had a lot of extra manipulation. And, and instead of drilling, whenever you click on something in Power BI by default, it actually just causes um, the other data to shift based upon the relationship of that particular data point. So I think really just a phenomenal way to uh, add more interactivity and be able to, to uh, uncover more insights into your data. Another capability similar to this, and this is, comes I think from some competitive products because I've got some experience in the past where this type of capability was used and you can now have bookmarks. So you can think of a bookmark as very similar to your browser um, favorites, right? When you add a favorite to your browser, it's basically taking a snapshot of the URL that you were on and giving you a way to quickly access that. Well, this is a way you can, let's say you go in and you do a particular type of analysis where you click on, you know, two or three or four different visualizations to get kind of a snapshot view of something like of these actors. And then you can create a bookmark. So at any point in time, I can just go open up my bookmarks, click the bookmark, and it'll take me right back exactly to that set of selections that I had previously. Okay. There's also going to be a way that we can, for example, drill from one bookmark to another and, and actually have this, have a lot more interactivity of going from one tab, as you see here in, my, in this Power BI model, I've got a bunch of different tabs. So I can use bookmarks to be able to kind of flow through each of the tabs. Whereas before, 
you really couldn't do that. You can kind of fake it a little bit, but now I can truly have full on navigation, having a hyperlink or, or a bookmark that will take me to somewhere else and show me additional insights. Okay. Another biggie out there is what if analysis. Okay. True what if analysis. And so that's what the new parameter slash under what if is. Again, not available yet. Uh, hopefully in the July update, we'll see that. If not, maybe we'll see that in the next month. But again, we're told by September, we should see these things. And essentially it allows you to now start to do some true what if capability. So if I increased um, you know, the USD to Euro dollar value, what would that look like? Okay, say so, you know, the, the value of the dollar to the Euro increases, and what is that gonna do from an income perspective or from a profitability perspective? Now I'm going to show you an example where we can actually do that today, uh, but it takes a fair amount of manipulation behind the scenes to be able to do it. Uh, but this is going to be a lot easier, a lot more straightforward, and a whole lot less steps uh, to do that. So again, I'll come back to that one. Some other miscellaneous goodies, and that is, you know, how do you roll out the Power BI Desktop across large organizations? Well, today, you know, your only option is if you want to start using Power BI Desktop, you've got to download it from uh, the Microsoft website, and then um, you, you will get a notification that there's a new version available, but then you've got to go back out, click the download, download it, and, re and install the new version. Well, what they're going to now do is put that into the Windows Store, which will now automatically work with the Windows Update service, to be able to kind of keep your Power BI desktop and or if you're using your Excel components um, all up to date uh, without you having to do those extra steps of you know going to the website, finding the latest version, downloading it and reinstalling it. So big time saver there. And from a big larger organization, you can set group policies and determine you know who gets the updates, who doesn't, that sort of thing, just to make that a whole lot easier when you've got lots and lots of users. The other thing, they will continue to iterate on the customization and formatting of the native visualizations. Um, I think that's a great thing because you, we're now getting to the point of I can control fonts on my headers, on my rows, on my columns. Before you had very little, limited capability to change the fonts. You could basically change the font size and it would use the, its own default fonts, but now you can even change the font type, the font size, the font colors. And, and get really creative in the types of dashboards and visualizations that either you create for your own consumption or that you obviously can create for others in your organization. So uh, it's just now, you know, things I always wish I could do in some certain charts, now I can actually do with these additional formatting options. And then another big one, theming, that's been around for a few iterations. Uh, I don't know, I'd say at least six months or so. And a theme allows you to set a certain color palette. And to some extent, you know, the types of fonts and the font sizes and defaults of that. Well, this is gonna be, that's where the style part comes in. Today, themes are very limited. Basically, it just gives you different color options. So I can pick a, you know, a, a company corporate data color scheme or color palette. Um, so we can have our AKA color palette in there. You could have your XYZ company color palette in there. Um, but those are gonna be greatly improved as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so essentially it's kind of like, I think the format capability, if you've ever used that in PowerPoint or Word, you can just kind of highlight something and say, click the format button. And then I want it to format anything else that I click on to do the exact same, same font size, same font type, uh, you know, dimensions, all that fun stuff. So again, I think this is gonna be a huge productivity uh, increase. And um, again, we'll help you create some uh, nicer visualizations. So with that, we've also got a few additional key resources here. So if you were not able to attend, uh, the, the keynotes are out there, the uh, uh, couple of good ones. So I definitely recommend you know, spend an hour for each of those uh, to go out and check those out. You can also see the uh, general overview intro sessions. Uh, so you don't get all access to all of them, but you get access to a fair amount of them. There's also, by the way, uh, most of them also have either a PDF version or the actual PowerPoint version of their uh, presentations. So that helps when you can kind of see the context of the presentation on the video along with the actual content. Uh, there we even kind of, there's uh, 
filtered this on YouTube so you can see just the sessions on dashboard reports and design. And then uh, if you're a little bit more technical, then uh, same thing here, that one's pre-filtered to show you those that were more developer focused. So using the API, using Power BI Embedded, um, creating your own custom visualizations, that's where you get um, the ability to extend this application even further uh, if you've got some folks with some developer skills or you yourself have some developer skills. Okay, so let's go back and uh, take a deeper dive on some of these other examples. Uh, so I'm gonna go in and show, let's see, the, uh, let's go into a different workspace here. I'm gonna go into my webinar and I'm gonna go to the streaming live data. Uh, now, here's where I'm going to show you two things. One, um, this part here is actual live streaming data. Okay, so think about that. This is a great opportunity to be able to tie into, for example, if you're more equipment or device oriented type organization, you, know, you make equipment, um, that equipment can be internet enabled, then you can actually monitor that information live, set alerts, set notifications, things along those lines. What this is showing is there's a little weather station that's got an API out there that you can connect to, and uh, it's continuously monitoring, in this case, temperature, humidity, and photo sensors. And so now what you're seeing is those are live second by second, uh, and actually I think it's like uh, half a second or so, and then um, it's plotting that data and showing you, you know, over time what those sensors are generating. So here's where you can actually come in and go and set uh, an alert and uh, be able to get notification when it goes above a certain threshold or below a certain threshold. Now here is the big one on uh, integrating Power Apps with uh, Power BI. All right, so I was able to go out and created a, a simple little um, Power BI a Power App application, and it's just got one big button and, and five stars. So it's a little rating mechanism. So this is something that you, know, you can say post on your dashboard to get some real time um, feedback from end users on the dashboards that you're delivering. Okay, so hopefully keep your fingers crossed. This is going to work. I'm going to give uh, this particular dashboard a five star rating. And as soon as I hit the submit button, within a few seconds, we should see the score update. And uh, hopefully, let's see, we, we should also see the data here, which I'm not sure why I'm not seeing the data. Let's drill down into that. Yeah, there it is. So let's uh, go back to the dashboard. And uh, we'll, we'll give an update here and see what happens. All right. So it's loading up my Power app. And now once I give it a five star rating and click the submit button, 1001, 1002, boom. Ah, thank you Murphy for not messing with me. So it went to 35, so it's just kind of keep, keeping a tally of all the scores. And then it also popped that in here as well, okay? So if I wanted to say, oh, now let's do a 32, hit submit, and you'll see that that should also, hope there it went, 37. So. Now, think about that. I could have a, a chart here that has a list of my um, maybe last year's uh, sales quotas, and I want to play with it a little bit. I can build a Power App to be able to capture my changes and then write those back to a data set, and then I can use that to formulate this year's or my next year's um, quotas for everybody on the sales team. Okay? Or maybe I'm more on the financial side, and we want to see what kind of impact uh, we'll have if, for example, we um, increase our price by 5%, things along those lines. So speaking of those, I'll give you a, a similar example of the uh, of how you can do a what-if analysis along those lines. Okay. And so here you can see in this case, now this is kind of this pre-new what-if parameter. So again, it was possible, but I had to do a fair amount of uh, manipulation, not really code per se, um, but you know you got to get a little bit um, tricky with your um, what's called DAX language behind the scenes. But anyway, um, you'll see here. Here's the current data that I have. Okay, so we've got uh, these, these 12,000 opportunities, an average of $45,000. There's our win rate. There's our total revenue. And then down here, you'll see with no changes, it's it's mirroring that, right? So we've got total revenue 
win rate, et cetera. So let's say that you know we want to see what happens if things are increased by 10%. Boom. So notice it didn't change the data here. Okay, it did change my percent change, so I know what's happening, but it did definitely change it down here to my changes. Right. So I can see a 10% increase. Now again, I this is a re relatively simplistic. I could have a different percent change for opportunities, a different percent change for deal size, a different one for win rate. You know, so it can get a little challenging doing multiples like that, but it's definitely possible. So what you can see here is 10% change in overall opportunities and average deal size is, is going to give me about a 9% growth rate. Uh, but you'll see that, yep, that's a 10% of the average deal size. That's a 10% bump up in ops. And that's a 10% bump in uh, total revenue. I can kind of go through, let's see what happens if we do a 50% increase. Boom. Yeah, those numbers are looking good. You know, we're approaching a million, uh, a billion dollars. And if we go to 75, boy, wouldn't that be nice, right? So you can kind of see as I keep clicking through my options, if you will, my what ifs, it's changing the data here. Now, here's where we can embed another little power app down below here and then be able to actually save those changes um, back to a data set. Okay. So awesome, awesome capabilities there. Here's uh, something similar in that if I go to my currency example, this one's pretty popular for folks that do have businesses uh, or divisions in other countries, right? And they do their business in other currencies from a reporting perspective. Uh, so what you'll see here is I've just got a table that lists the uh, US dollar to euro. So one US dollar equals, uh, if it's a one-to-one -one against my euros, what does that look like? So these numbers you'll see match right now because one dollar equals one euro. Well, what about a dollar 25? Um, if my dollar, if if my dollar costs me a dollar twenty-five in euros, so it's one point two five dollars to one euro. What's going to happen there? And so you'll see that those are definitely decreasing, you know, by twenty-five uh, percent. And if I do the same thing here, if it how it happens at a dollar twenty-five, so the higher that ratio or that exchange rate becomes, the gap between them, the less I'm going to make in the, um, my euro uh, reporting countries, but I still see that you know it's not having that effect obviously on my U.S. dollar sales. So I can take that all the way down to an individual column row um, that uh, allows me to see what's going to happen, you know, in that what if type scenario. And then let's go back to uh, our other example here, and I'm going to go to let's. Sales management. We'll try this one again, and I'll show you a little bit of the uh, Arc GIS one, uh, and uh, and then I think uh, from there, uh, Visio timeline. Yep, that's it. That's oh, here we go. That's now decided to work properly. So here's what I was trying to show earlier uh, that I think is a little bit more impactful. I'm going to zoom in on the on the graphic here, so you'll see here that I've got. For example, the, my trials to signups, but here's what I meant by I've taken data out of my data set and out of my visuals that are supporting this and overlaying it on top of that Visio graphic. So in this case, I've got targets and actuals, um, and then the color coding is basically uh, just shows me uh, a different percentage of time spent in each of those. All right. So uh, you can see here, I've got my actuals and my targets. And so now let's say, you know what, here's, here's where you get that two-way capability. If I click on opportunity, notice the data changes in my related chart, but also flip to show me over here in my visual, okay? And there's my target of 750, and there's my actual of 500. How about uh, the telephone call, so our initial telephone call? Whoop, there is the telephone call, okay? Targets actuals. How about, uh, let's go back up and do, uh, landed in the sales queue and it's going to jump over to landed in sales queue uh, and oops, I don't have a value for that so there's field sales etc so really I think again helps open up the possibilities of what we can do to um, um, build really amazing and interactive uh, visualizations now with this <coughs> additional capability of building uh, it in to a Visio uh, diagram.
And how you do that over here on the left hand side, notice that you'll see that there is, you do have to import this. So usually go import from store. And, uh, and actually this is not available in the store yet, but um, you have to go to another place on the Microsoft website and download it, I think, unless they've released it here, Visio. And no, so uh, once that is actually released, you'll just be able to go into here and uh, download or add any of the custom visuals that you want. Visio will be one of those here um, by September, okay? And so let's now go and look at the other one here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's go one more. And I'll show you really quickly uh, an ArcGIS capability. And uh, screen's flashing around a little bit there. So um, again, this is, I think, uh, let me do this. And we'll do a Contoso example. Uh, come on. And Contoso. Okay. And then we're going to drill down into my Contoso dashboard. I'm going to add a new tab to my dashboard down here. So actually adding a new, re, uh, a new tab to my report. So I'm gonna go into edit mode. Notice I, in this case, I am doing this in um, the powerbi.com service. Uh, I do need to be in the service in order to do the Visio one, but ArcGIS, since it's now generally available, actually it's now a default visualization. Um, it'll be there in both the Power BI desktop as well as in the web service. Uh, but let's go in and we'll do uh, some accounting here. So let's get a chart on there. And we're going to do, let's say, by city. Oops. We're going to do city here. And I want to take some, let's do estimated uh, opportunity values. So we'll do that with, uh, let's just say, the size. Drop that on my size. And uh, I want to get rid of that one. There. Okay, so we should start to see this drilling in and showing me details about that particular data. All right. And now I'm going to go in and just edit this and start to overlay additional information that is coming from um, the ArcGIS product. Okay. So notice here we were spread out kind of worldwide, lots of different cities, but let's say that, you know what, I want a little bit more colorful map and I kind of want to get down to the street level so you can change it down to the street level. And then as I kind of zoom closer in on my data sets here, uh, we'll start to see that uh, those data overlays there. See now starting to look a lot more like that map. I'm going to come in here to Seattle and drill down, drill down. And now we'll drag this over a little bit more. And from here, what we want to do is uh, go in and add, uh, you know, I can do a, a new theme. So maybe I want this kind of heat map capability there. Right. And now I want to go in and start adding some reference layers. So here's where I was talking about, you know, this is the this is really where um, Arcus shines in terms of having this kind of publicly available data and why public sector in particular uses a lot of it, but healthcare companies, government agencies of all types use it. I want to get an overlay of the general household income in those areas. So I can now drill down a little bit closer. And as you see, as I keep drilling down closer and closer to the data, it's, it's breaking that out into smaller and smaller chunks. And um, so I can see my concentration of uh, opportunities uh, was uh, in the, uh, kind of in that Seattle area. Let's say that, you know what, maybe I want instead, I want to get an overview of the population density, right? And so uh, if we uh, drill down into an area here, we'll get a visual on the um, population density. And so we got to scroll over to the US to get to that, right? Because it's Currently, that's one of the limitations. The ARC uh, GIST data is available only for US data today. Um, they are working on exposing and enhancing that for 
uh, additional countries. So uh, I'd say it's coming soon. And so with the uh, rapid updates that we see uh, every month from Power BI, uh, I'm sure that we're going to see an update that will expand this beyond U.S. data here pretty soon. So we'll just uh, get down to this level here and uh, we'll kind of drill down. And now you'll start to see here's now the the, hot, the darker the color, uh, the higher the uh, income um, or population density is for those areas. So interestingly enough, we've got a high concentration of opportunities here with high value in a highly populated area. It looks like probably, you know, it's like, uh, I'm going to guess maybe Gary, Indiana, somewhere in that frame. I come from, I grew up in Indiana, so I kind of know that area. And so, uh, um, you know, again, nice way to help you visualize data and be able to make more and better business decisions off of that. So uh, with that, uh, we're going to wrap it up and open it up to questions. Uh, so Jessica, any questions that we have uh, from our team today? Yes, um, thank you, Mike. Um, so you saw a few minutes to submit your questions. Um, there's a few questions already submitted. So let's begin, answer those now. Um, the first question is, what is the cost of Power BI Premium? Ah, Power BI Premium has uh, different pricing structures based upon what they call a node. And that's recommended that you start with a single node. And that is $4,995 per month per organization. All right, so that's where it switches from a per user price to essentially a per company price. So $5,000 per month um, will get you that node one dedicated resources, ability to deploy on-prem if you want, and unlimited users. Now, there is a caveat there. You do need at least one Power BI Pro user license in order to you know, do your designs of your dashboards, right? So you got to have that capability. So let's call it $5,000 and $5,010 and $5, per month, you know, at minimum um, for your larger organization, okay? And that's still a great value if you compare that to say like a, uh, a ClickView application or a Tableau. You know, if you're looking at the similar capabilities, you're probably talking double that amount in a ClickView or a Tableau. Um, so 60,000 a year. Uh, versus say a hundred thousand on up for those other applications so still a great value um, again geared more towards the larger companies thanks mike the next question is does the visio integration cost extra ah. uh, that is and it depends so it does require at least today that you have um, visio online okay so today it won't like, you know, can't just like directly import a Visio um, graph or image. You have to first post it into Visio online, and then from there you're connecting to it. So from that perspective, it depends on what Office 365 um, subscription that you have. Uh, the E5, I believe it's included. If you're not on E5, then there is some additional cost Again, you would have to have at least one uh, Visio online license uh, to be able to post your Visio diagrams in Visio online and then be able to connect them from Power BI. Uh, offhand, I can't recall what, what Visio is um, price-wise. I think it's in that ten to twenty dollars per user per month range. So also um, pretty affordable. Um. The last question we have here is, uh, does the Arcus integration cost extra? Uh, and that's a great, um, I think, capability here and that everything that you see here, all these base layers, um, the themes, be able to add different types of symbols, no additional cost. And so that is out of the box. You get that uh, with the PowerBI.com service. You'll see that it is going to be one of these little icons under your visualizations. Uh, right out of the get-go, so no, no additional cost. Now, um, our understanding is that there will be some kind of like future capabilities that there may be some additional cost, but a lot of our customers already have a subscription to Arcus, and so they should just be able to take advantage of the additional layers 
and data and information that are available there and uh, overlay that if you do have a subscription with Arceus. But you don't need to um, pay anything extra for this additional detailed mapping capability out of the box. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. Um, that includes our presentation for today. Uh, thank you everyone for your participation. Um, in the next couple of days, you'll receive a copy of the presentation and a link to the recording of the webcast. Um, please reach out to uh, Mike Hammonds or uh, Jessica Fiorenza if you, or your account manager if you uh, have any additional qu uh, questions. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.